What if you write anything on the URL gets displayed on your web page? This is what we will be learning today in this video using query parameters and route parameters in this single video. So sit back and relax because this video is going to be a little long and stay tuned till the end because in the end section I will be discussing the difference between the two. So let's get started. Hey coders, this is Neha from Webstack. So before getting started, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on that subscribe button and do hit that bell icon to stay notified each time I upload a new video. So you may have not realized that every day we are dealing with so-called query parameters on the Google. You don't believe it? Let me tell you something. What if you search something on the Google? Let's say I want to search node. So what is happening here is in the URL you can see something is written after question mark. One thing I can see is client. Another thing I can see is queue. So this queue is basically your query which you are writing. So if I write something here called full stack, then it will be displaying the results related to full stack. So this means that they are fetching the value of these variables into your web page. So let's start with the query parameters first. So query parameters can be recognized after question mark. Whatever is written after question mark constitutes to a query parameter or you can say it as query string. In this query string the parameters are client which is Firefox right now and the next is queue that stands for query. So if I write anything inside the queue parameter that is a query that will get fetched in this web page. So let's now try to fetch the similar kind of thing in our website. Now if I write here question mark and let's say n equals to let's suppose the name I'm writing so it should be fetched on this web page. So let's try to do that right now and take this about a space because it is a little bit clean. So I will be writing and fetching the values from the query string into this about us page. So let's go into our Visual Studio code, Open the web.php file. You can see the slash about us is actually opening the page simple called about us. Now, what if I want to pass something to this page? We have already seen that in the previous videos, how to pass data into the web page. If you have not seen that video, you have to check out that video because Otherwise, you will not be able to understand the things. So I'll provide the link in the description box below. You can go and check it there. Now, in about us, whatever we are going to pass a, a parameter or any value to this page, you need to pass it as a second argument in this view method. So in the second argument, we write an array and inside it, we write the key and value pair. So let's say the key is name. And inside it, I need to pass some variable. So the main thing is to fetch the value which you are writing here. Let's say I want to write question mark, then name or say simply n equals to Neha. So now if I write it, it should be displayed in this page. But for that, I need to be able to fetch this variable called n. So to fetch that, what we need to do is we need to write a method called request and inside it you need to write the variable name. So here the variable name is n. So I will be writing the same name here. So let's write n and that's it. Store it in a variable called dollar $name. So this is how you fetch the query string parameters into your variables and now pass the same variable here. So that means now we are passing this key called name name. So let's go on to our about us page and to find that you simply need to write or to press control P and you can search for the file you want. So now in this about us page, uh, let's try to write it here and let's create one more division out here. So I'll be writing one division. Inside it, 
let's try to display the name which the user is writing on the query string. So now if I save it and just refresh the page again with this variable as Neha. So now you can see the value is getting displayed here on the web page. And let's say if I want to write some another variable, so you can write n number of variables separating it with this ampersand symbol. So let's say I want to write something called code and the code is let's say get 50. So that means we will get 50% off. So let's try this out, enter and nothing is getting displayed right now. So what we can do is simply we can just fetch that variable also just copy paste it and instead of n we can write c and instead of this name I can write simply code. Now we need to pass another parameter in this about us page. So what I need to do in the same array you will write a comma and then you will write another key value pair. So another key value pair will be code and then you will be writing the variable name that is code. That means whatever value is going uh, to be written in the C variable in query string will be fetched in this variable code and it will be given uh, to this key that is written inside the second parameter of this view method. So now to display this code, what I can do is I can simply write the code here. Offer code and then you can write the code here. We are passing the key as dollar $code. So that's it. Just refresh the page again. So here we go. So this is how you fetch the query string parameters into your web page. Coming to route parameters, it can also be identified inside the URL. But there is no question mark inside the URL to identify this route parameters. So how you can identify that? Let's suppose I have opened this Wikipedia and I search for Laravel here. Now if you can check on the URL, you can see here it is written something called slash wiki slash Laravel. So if you search something else here, let's say I write node, then you can see that yes, the results are coming for the node. This is actually called route parameters. That means the parameters we are passing inside the route, these are getting fetched on our web page. So let's see how to do that in our project. Now if you can check this website, you can see that there is a page for products and where the different products are being shown. Now if I write something here like laptop, so it should be displaying the laptops to me. If I write here mobile, then it should be displaying the mobile. So let's see how to do that in this code. So it's very simple to fetch the route parameters in Laravel. And what we need to do is, as we are passing this route parameter as within the URL, so I need to write something uh, here after the products, right, uh, like slash, and then you need to write the curly braces, oops, a single curly braces, which will actually represent the parameter which you are passing inside that route. So I will be writing here, let's say I want to type the name of the product. And for that, you need to write a variable here inside the function. You can name the variable anything. It can be dollar name, it can be dollar n, or anything you wish for. So I'll be keeping it simple and write the name as dollar name only. And now this is simple. Now we need to pass this variable into this web page called products. So you already know how to pass that. Inside the view, in the second argument, in the form of an array, we will be writing the variable. So now this was the first argument that is products. Now we will be passing the second as the name of the product. So let's say I'm writing here n just to identify it differently because we are already writing the name inside this product array. So to just differentiate, I'm writing another key that is n and actually it will store what is being passed inside this variable called name, which is getting passed inside this function. So this function is taking this variable 
from our web page. What will happen is this laptop will be stored inside this. So that means this URL is having a route parameter called name and which will be passed to this dollar name inside the function and which will be passed in the form of this key called n. So now we will open the products page. So let's just type control P and then products.blade.php. So inside this you can check we have written so many things. So I have just commented it out from here and our code starts from here. Let me comment this out. So let's try to print that here in double curly braces and let's write $n. Now refresh the page and as you can see we are writing this laptop here. Just to make it a little bit more clear and I'll just copy paste this code and write it above this. So it would be easy if I write it here, all products page. Let's just write it here and it will become more prominent. Yes, now you can check whatever you are writing in this URL. So if I write here, let's say mobile and you can see that inside the page, it is giving me the mobile. Also, there is no restriction in this parameter. So even if I write 1, 2, 3, 4, it will just display that on the browser. So that means it does not identify whether it is a variable like string or it is a number or anything else. So I can write here a string as well, a alphanumeric number as well. So whatever you write here will be displayed in the web page. Now, let's say if I write something here as mobile and then I say I want to write multiple route parameters. So what you can do is if you uh, write something called here, let's say mobile MI, then you can also give the name of the brand. So what? how can you fetch these two parameters now? Uh, just you need to write here one more thing in the mapping. So in this route file, you just need to write one more variable inside this curly braces and let's say the brand. Now, the trick for this is that you need to give one more variable here for the second route parameter that is dollar brand and you need to pass it here as well. So let's say b equals to dollar brand. That's it. Now you can just display it here in the side. Now you can just display it here by the side of this name called dollar b. So that's it. Refresh the page again and you can check it is writing the mobile as well as mi. So that means you can write n number of route parameters you want like this or this but you need to provide in the route file this curly braces. Coming to one more concept of optional parameters that is uh, really useful. So if you want to study optional parameters what you can do is let's say I want to make this name or this brand as optional parameter. So you need to uh, like add one question mark after this, after that uh, variable and you need to initialize that variable with some value. So let's say I write the brand name as null. So you need to provide the value by default otherwise it will give an error. So now if I don't give the brand here, so the brand is not coming. So now if I give the brand name as by default something called dummy and let's refresh this. Oops, I need to write it inside the quotes. Save it. Give it a refresh. Now you can check that it is writing me dummy in front of it because I have not provided anything in the optional parameter. But there is a catch here. What is that? If I want to make this name as optional, and this brand as non-optional parameter, then there will be a problem. Now if I leave this mobile as such and I also provide the default value, something called JJ or something and then if I click this, it will say page not found. That means you cannot keep the in-between parameters as blank. So you need to write something in between and you can keep always the last parameters as the optional parameter. 
Now, let's say if I write here mobile, it should only display me uh, this detail that is mobile MI 40,000 price. So how to do that? It's very simple and now that we have already fetched the parameter called this mobile into the variable n, so now what we can do is we can simply compare this variable n with the name of the product like you are fetching it here. So what you can do is inside this for each loop, so we have already started this for each loop in the previous videos. If you have not checked out that video, please go and check out that video first. I'll provide the link in the description box below. So we will be writing an if statement. So I'll be comparing this product name. Let's just copy paste this. So if dollar $p name, if it is equals to let's say dollar $n. So that means if I'm writing mobile and the product name is also mobile here, then it will display only the details of the mobile like the brand or the price. So what you can do is you can just uh, close this if statement by writing and if. So I hope you are already familiar with the blade. If you are not comfortable with the blade, you can just go and watch the previous videos. The links are in the description box below. So save it now and just go to the web page, press enter. Oops. Okay, so actually the name of the product is in capital, so we need to write like this and here we go. So you can check that the mobile, MI, the brand as well as the price is getting displayed. So this is called route parameters. So now let's see what is the difference between the two. So now coming to the difference between the two that is really, really important to know. Believe me, it will solve all your doubts. Now, if you can see these two uh, browsers, you can see that in one I have searched in the uh, Google that is Catalan number and in the other thing we have searched in the Wikipedia called Catalan number. So the difference between the two is the first one you can see here in uh, this window is actually called the query string because something is written after question mark first and in the second window if you can check we something is written uh, inside the route that is known as route parameter. So apart from this identification factors, what is the other factor that makes them really different is that you can use this query string whenever you want to filter out some data like you are filtering here in this browser, it will search all the Catalan numbers records inside the database and it will filter out that and show it on the browser. But whereas with the help of this uh, route parameters, you can specifically display something on the browser. Like if I write here Catalan number, it will only display the page for Catalan number. If I write something called Laravel, then it will only display the web page or wiki page related to Laravel. So that is what we have learned from this query string and the route parameters. So whenever you want to filter out anything, uh, like you want to search for the employees is getting salary, 20 thousand then you can search it out filter it out using query string another thing you can do is you can uh, just search for a particular employee like i want to search employee whose id is uh, 2313 so you can simply just use route parameters so this is where you will be going to use these two uh, methods and both are beneficial like if you are using the forms or the get methods you will be seeing this kind of uh, query strings and if you are like using post methods update methods then you can check out that we will be using the route parameters like create update delete so we will be seeing that in the later videos when we will be connecting the database with our laravel project so that's all for this video i hope your doubts are now clear and if you like the content give us a thumbs up let me know in the comment section below what next topic you want to learn and i'll make a video on that so see you in the next video.